field test. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Mike Levy here to welcome you to Pink Bikes Fall Field Test. We're here in a wet and misty Pemberton, BC with what I think are some of the most interesting machines that we've ever had at one of these things. Now this time around, we've got six aggressive trail bikes with travel ranging from 135 millimeters to 150 millimeters and six of something called down country with travel up to 120 millimeters. Let's take a walk through the fleet and see what we've been riding, starting with the least amount of travel. This is Canyon's mostly new Lux Trail. Canyon has made a new front triangle for this bike. It's got 110 millimeters of rear wheel travel, 120 millimeter fork, and in my mind, it's sort of what a downcountry bike should be. But we'll see how it handles the rocky and steep terrain here in Pemberton. Now, keeping things a little more cross country focused is this. Santa Cruz's new Blur. Now you can get this in a full out race version or like ours, the TR model. 115 millimeters of rear wheel travel, 120 millimeter fork, and in case you haven't noticed, Santa Cruz ditched VPP in favor of a single pivot, flex pivot design to save some weight. This is an interesting bike and we're gonna see how it compares. Now since we're talking redesigns, have a look at this black beauty, Rocky Mountain's all new element. Now they've made it a whole bunch of degrees slacker and way longer. It's got 130 millimeter fork up front and 120 millimeters of rear wheel travel. This is not your dad's element. And speaking of your dad, who remembers Trek's full out cross country race bike, the Top Fuel? It's got a bump up to 120 millimeters of travel on both ends and much more relaxed geometry. The next bike that we've been testing here in Pemberton is Niner's all new Jet9 RDO. Now this thing has 120 millimeters of travel and much longer slacker geometry than their previous bikes. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Niner isn't exactly the first brand that comes to mind when I think of capable downcountry bikes, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's go take a look at our last downcountry bike that is unfortunately still under embargo. Now, as you guys can see, it's black, it's got some wheels, and that's about all I can tell you right now. And that is it for the downcountry bikes. Let's take a walk and have a look at the aggressive trail bikes. If you're watching this on Pink Bike, there's a good chance that you're looking for something with a bit more travel and a bit less head angle than those downcountry machines. Which brings us to Raw's all new Jib. Now, if you're familiar with their 160 millimeter travel Madonna, you could think of the Jib as a shorter travel version of that. It has 135 millimeters out back, 150 millimeter fork, a whole bunch of aluminum, and look at the size of that main pivot. Okay, let's keep it in Europe for a few more minutes because our next bike is Ghost Riot Trail Full Party. Now, it's an aluminum frame with some very questionable purple graphics, and interestingly for us, it's wearing formula suspension and brakes. So we'll see how this bike compares to things that we're a little more familiar with. Now, we're gonna stay in Germany for just a few more minutes to take a look at Propane's Carbon Fiber Hugene. This is a 140 millimeter travel trail bike with a 150 fork, and if it's anything like the last Propane we tested, it probably pedals pretty damn well. Now our next bike is from a brand new brand called Score. This bike has 140 millimeters of travel in the rear, 150 up front, and it uses a new dual link design that we haven't seen before, along with a very toothpaste colored frame color. Let's go from a new brand to one that you might have heard of before. This is Specialized brand new Stump Jumper Evo Alloy. And this is the aluminum version of the bike that we called our mountain bike of the year last year. It's much more affordable, but it still includes very adjustable geometry. You could take this head angle from 65 and a half degrees all the way down to 63 degrees. So it should be able to excel in almost any sort of terrain. Now, if Specialized is the Goliath of the mountain bike world, our next bike is made by David. This is the Starling Murmur. It has 140 millimeters of rear wheel travel, 150 millimeter fork, 
And in case you can't tell, there's a whole lot of steel and not a lot of pivots. Now you guys know that we like to have an outlier at the field test, something a little bit different, and this bike definitely fills that need. Pemberton is just up the road from Whistler, and some might say that the riding here is even better, although I don't think the locals would admit to that. And there's plenty of rowdy stuff here, but given that we're riding trail and downcountry bikes, we're being careful not to overstep what the bikes were intended to see. We've got a nice loop picked out for the downcountry bikes that myself and Henry Quinney have been lapping non-stop, while Mike Casimir and Alicia Leggett have been taking the aggressive trail bikes to some terrain that's a bit more challenging higher up on the mountain. Now we're always gonna talk about how these bikes feel on the trail, that's not gonna change. But just like previous field tests, there is a whole bunch of timed testing going on. We're timing both the descents and the climbs to figure out how they perform. Just like previous field tests, all of these bikes are wearing control tires. We've got Schwalbe's Wicked Will for the downcountry bikes, and for those aggressive trail bikes, they've been shod with Maxxis's Asagai up front and DHR2s in the back. Now I know everybody out there only watches these field test series because we do the efficiency test videos and we don't wanna let any pinkers down who are waiting for a 10 minute video about climbing. So Henry Quinney is up to bat for that one. Speaking of climbing, the impossible climb is here as well and we've returned back to the very first location. This time around, it's Matt Beer that's gonna be falling over instead of me, which I am very grateful for. And your reward for all those climbing videos? Well, we always wrap up the field test series with the Huck to Flat. This time around, the field test is supported by Rafa Apparel and Bontrager Shoes and Helmets. And just like every field test before, there's gonna be about 100 videos that come out of this gong show. So stay tuned for all sorts of arguing, laughing, maybe a little bit of crashing, plenty of climbing and some huck to flats. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything.